Hey guys, there is so much going on. I don't even know where to start. Last week, Ricardo and his crew came down. We did a ton of work in the basement. I had to redesign at the last second all of the plumbing layout down there because going to a nonprofit, I need much more open space down there for gift shops and ticket sales. So my big apartments I had planned, I had to compress into two small apartments and I had to do it quick because the plumber was coming on Monday and he needed that final layout to get started and I didn't want to hold him up. It's been a long process and that just needs to get underway. Heather came back down. We did some more detailed documentation on the hardware and started looking at the light fixture in the dining room. I don't know. It's just been busy. I don't even remember what's going on in the week. It's going to get even busier. But let me stop talking about it and just get into some video and show you what went on. Ricardo is going to take the plywood off the basement window so we have some light in there to work. And you'll be able to see just how bright that basement's going to be with these things gone. We're getting ready for the plumber to come. So we've got a lot of work to do to get things ready. All this dirt that's over here is going to have to be moved over here. I hate doing things twice. Then this room has to be completely cleaned out and all the concrete floor removed. And then in this little room, we've got to clean out half of it and take out half of the floor in here. Then over here, we're going to cut and remove a section of this cistern wall 24 inches down so that the plumbing can come through. And also at the other end and going into that room. So we've got a lot of concrete removal to do. One of Ricardo's normal crew was unable to come, so Maribel came and I filled in. So we divided up and went girls versus guys. So the guys took to the shovels and started moving the sand and Maribel and I tackled the rooms that needed to be cleared out before the concrete could be removed. It was a little bit like playing Frogger. We had to coordinate our running back and forth in between them shoveling so that we didn't interrupt their rhythm. Once everything was out of the room, we tackled this partition wall that if you watched an earlier video, you saw it fell down basically. It wasn't really attached to anything. It was so rotted. We struggled a little bit with it to figure out the best position to get it in to remove the boards. But once we got kind of a system going, it wasn't too bad. It was tough because there were so many big nails holding this thing together. It was a little bit overkill. And we were actually trying to be pretty careful with the boards because the old lumber is different dimensions than today. When you get a two by four today, it's not really two inches by four inches. It's smaller than that. And so the old lumber doesn't match up with the new lumber. And we needed the boards that were coming off of this divider to fill in some gaps in the half bathroom under the grand stairwell that had been rotted and eaten out by termites. So we really wanted to salvage this wood. I'm not gonna lie, it was tough. This wood was very, very hard and it was also brittle. So you can't really tell because of the time lapse, but every time we tried, tried to pry real hard, the boards would start cracking and that's what took us so long. We had to do just a little bit at a time and go up and down and keep even pressure on the board the full length until we got everything loose and could get that cross brace off. Ricardo had to come check out our work a time or two just to make sure we were doing it properly. In addition to just wanting to use old lumber and needing the right dimension, building materials are so expensive right now that anything that we can save and reuse actually saves us money. It more than pays for the labor that it takes to reclaim all this wood. And at last we were able to declare victory and move on to the next project.
With that area clear, Ricardo brought in the big jackhammer and started busting out the concrete. While the guys were working on the concrete, I moved on to another one of those divider panels. For some reason, it was actually much easier than the first one that we did. It didn't have quite so many nails in it. I took a much different approach to the last one because it was still firmly attached to the wall, so I was able to just knock the boards loose with the sledgehammer. You can see here that the concrete is just about an inch thick and underneath that are some bricks but before we could get to the bricks that layer of concrete had to be busted out and removed so that was step one. The bricks were really soft and crumbly they are not hard fired bricks. I don't know what kind of brick they are, but we chipped them out with a pickaxe and just a shovel and a pry bar underneath, and they were so brittle and fragile they couldn't be saved. I had really hoped that all these bricks could be salvaged and I could use them as some kind of pathway around the house, but even trying to take them out by hand, they would crumble in our hands, so they were all going to be trash. There was just nothing we could do about it to save them. I'd gotten my first inclination about how the concrete was poured in this basement earlier in the process when we were trying to lift up some of the beams to level the house and instead of the jacks lifting the house up it actually broke through the floor and pushed our supports down. So everything was bricked mm -hmm. and then they you just see poured. The, the concrete is? That's why it's breaking. Yeah, we tried shoveling, but it turned out the quickest way to get the brick up was just to squat down and pick it up by hand and throw it in the wheelbarrow. I got a great upper arm and glute workout. The guys moved on to jackhammering out those big thick sections of wall of the cistern. So I picked up with shifting the sand from one side to the other. But then I got some help and it was kind of a multi-person job, almost like a bucket brigade, except this was a shovel brigade. It's slow, tedious work and it's just dirty and gross because the sand is soft and it goes everywhere. It's in the air, it's in your shoes, it's just filthy. But I do want you to take a look at how pretty this basement is with the plywood off the windows. This is a great shot of how light and bright it's going to be down here when we get all the windows open. This has been a dark, horrible space in most of the videos because those windows were closed up, but you're really starting to get a glimpse of how great this space can be. Then it was time to move the bathtub, which was pretty precariously sitting on some loose sand, and that took all four of us. We had to shove some boards under it in case we needed to slide it over and keep that sand from collapsing. It ended up not being too hard with four people, but it's pretty heavy. The boards worked pretty well for sliding it over the trench. I, my big fear was that that trench would collapse and somebody's leg would get trapped under that tub. Once it was safely on solid ground, then we could pick it up and put it where we needed it to be. I don't know what the guys went to work on, but Medibel got a hold of the jackhammer. Women power! <laughs> Medibel got to do the jackhammer. So I'm going to try. <laughs> and 
already have a feeling this isn't going to go well. <laughs> okay, what do I do? You need to turn on. You need to slide that bottom, the gray bottom, yeah, to the side. Okay. Now you put the the butter, hold the button, to the slide to the other side, to the right side, complete. Can I pause the video? Okay. <clears throat> broke it. Oh. Fortunately, Ricardo showed back up and had a spare chisel bit, so he just the hammer part <laughs> off, put the new chisel bit in, and then I had to use it to I chisel out him. the bit. I got stuck. Yeah, it's the first time. Okay. And I think it's went, a little went, bit harder. I went to straight and not you put it in an angle uh, didn't do enough okay all right so now i have to get that one out with this one okay. <laughs> then you can look at that one i did much better my second go around found out that Ricardo and Maribel had never seen the original old cistern so we took a completely useless break and dug out the pit again to expose the opening into the cistern so that they could stick their head in and see what was going on there. Then in another useless activity I decided that I wanted to try to retrieve some of the bricks out of there to see what they were because they don't look like the other bricks that I've seen around the house. So. I got the hoe and spent 15 minutes trying to reach in there and drag out some bricks. I was eventually successful and got a few. And they were different than anything else we've seen. It's kind of interesting what we got out of there. These are curved. The next day, the guys spent the entire day in the downstairs part of the addition that was added in 1920 in a small space that's going to be the bathroom for the West Apartment. This floor was very thick. It was ground up brick, a mixture of concrete. It basically took the entire day to get this floor out. It was way more difficult than the other floor that we did. After two full days down in the basement with that jackhammer, I decided it was time to do something outdoors. It was beautiful weather. It was bright and sunny. The humidity wasn't too bad and there were still some trash trees in the yard that needed to come out. So we took a break from the basement and spent a full day out in the yard. Cardo's gone rogue. Ricardo, what? Okay, I'm gonna call your mother. Okay, you have a ladder. Maribel, 
can't you do something? Can you not control him? Can you not control him? No. Okay, now he's going to put a safety harness on because he's already in the tree. Ugh. Not a good day for my blood pressure. Okay, Maribel just told me he worked as a tree trimmer for a year. He's a multitasker. She came back and she's digging. Say hi. <laughs> Heather came back and proved she's a real trooper. She doesn't just do the things she likes to do. She's willing to chip in and do any work that's necessary. Interesting. I just love this photo of Ricardo. All he needs is a Superman cape because that's what he is for this house. He's the Superman. Oh no, I just looked out the window. I think he's going to put a chain on that and try to pull it out. <laughs> okay. In all our tree cutting yesterday, we uncovered another line of bricks. You can see it starting there. But I can also tell it's here because there's kind of a brown line in the grass. When I take my shovel, I can hit the brick. So i got to dig these up. Earlier in the week, I'd had help from a friend laying out the apartment. I want to introduce to you my dear friend, Letitia. We've been right. friends since we were 11. A long which, time. A long time. We won't tell you how long that is. But... Anyway, she's helping me today. We're down in the basement and we're hot and gross. We've been here all day having some technical difficulties with remembering to turn the microphone on. So we're just now filming um, kind of at the tail end because we've already made some decisions. What we've been doing is laying out an apartment down here in the basement. The plumber no-showed me on Monday due to some issues beyond his control, but he swears he's coming tomorrow, and I have to have the final layout of the plumbing done so that he can put in his material order. So we are over on the west side laying out an apartment, and I had all this done months ago, but things changed when I decided to go the non-profit route. I needed to shrink the apartments down and make them much smaller to free up some real estate down here for ticket sales and display and things. So Letitia's got a good um, brain for space and layout, and we've been going back and forth on how to divvy this up. And there's some problems like this arched area. You can't put a wall in the middle and divide that in half. So there's a lot of limitations with bedrooms needing windows for exit where the door is and what's going on so let me take you in and show you the bathroom layout we've come up with this awkward little space that we're in has to be the bathroom mostly because the main plumbing stack is over in this corner and if you've seen the sewer line video you know we can't get too far away so we can't go any further in the apartment than this. So this had a bathroom at one time. We've knocked it out to make it bigger, but we're constrained by things like the minimum distance for clearance between walls for a toilet, where the venting has to be, where we need some support walls. So you wouldn't know it to look at it, but it's complicated and how many hours have we spent <laughs> down here several. <laughs> several hours today and i have spent several hours before but we think we have a perfect layout i'm gonna let letitia show you the bathroom layout that we've come up with ignore the giant uh, roof vent <laughs> <laughs> all the obstacles we couldn't pick it up to move it so we've been working around it okay but so i'm standing in the shower 
uh, this will be walled off. Uh, this will be a shower coming this way with the opening towards um, the room. There will be a long counter and sink to my left here on this wall. And then on this little wall, uh, this will all be adjusted a bit. The toilet will be in this area with the back to this wall and coming this direction um, into the room. The doorway will be kind of in the middle of the wall. And this, this little wall, again, adjustments we made, but the back side of it will be the kitchen and there'll be space there for um, some cabinetry and such. And it's just been killing me. Tried and tried and tried to find a way to repurpose this. This was the sink that was added probably in the 60s in the butler's pantry. It's got this incredible stainless one-piece top on it and they're very expensive, but it's not built to have a dishwasher in it. And it's kind of hard to run an apartment without a dishwasher, so I don't know that we'll be able to use it, but we're still trying to find a way to make it work. Question, does Jessica have a, a dishwasher now? No. Oh, no, she, she just has a little tiny sink. Right. So the kitchen, no, you can point over there. So the kitchen, <laughs> so the kitchen is going to go along this wall where Leticia is <laughs> pointing there. We'll have a sink, a stove, a dishwasher, and then room for a fridge at the end. And then behind this wall will be a pantry that actually recesses into part of the bathroom this wall will space. Be so that wall will be bathroom. closed in there. I think it'll make a nice little kitchen. There's a lot of light in here. There's a window behind all that mess over there that you can't see. But there's two windows here and a window in what will be a hall space passing from the living room into the bedroom area. So we're pretty happy actually with the layout we've come up with, I think. Don't you agree? I agree. Yeah. We're very happy with it, I think. And I know this room looks pretty dark and dingy, but there are three windows in this alcove that are boarded up and two in the front. So when all this is open, uh, actually about half of this, oops, got shadow. Actually about half of this room will be bedroom. It'll be a huge big space with a closet, room for a nice little reading nook over there so it'll be it'll be awesome this area was a little trickier to figure out you have to visualize that these posts will be gone once we finish the joist work down here and it, again it's going to have great light because there's three windows on this wall and two windows back in that little nook area but this will be another bedroom, bathroom, and then back in this space will be a long counter kitchen with room in the back for a table and chairs. So it'll be about 600, 650 square feet when all is said and done. But the bathroom, I can't even begin to describe it, is going to be in this corner here that's kind of a disastrous mess right now. We still have to cut all this out, but that's where the new plumbing will enter the building. Down there we'll be boring a hole there and bringing it in. And actually the bathroom will sit right on top of this area right here. And then the next day Heather came back down. So Heather and I are up looking at the leaded glass chandelier and so far we haven't found any clues as to the manufacturer. The only thing we found on it was a Christie's auction house sticker. So my guess is that John Samuels purchased this at Christie's, but we've been going over it with a fine tooth comb and we haven't seen any maker's marks. There's some clues like holes where crystals, you can see where crystals would have been hanging all the way around. And then something here, something probably screwed on the bottom. And then this one's broken completely off. That's broken. The other interesting thing is it's not wired. There's no electrical wire coming from the ceiling down into this thing. So it was just hanging here as a decoration, even though it was meant to be 
wired. You can see the end has sockets for light bulbs, but there's no wiring in it at all. There, these are not actual, well, yeah. this has got a screw, but there's nowhere for a wire to come up. I wonder if this was literally just for candles. Surely not. Surely not. But how strange. There is no... Well, you know what? This is solid. This is solid. It is solid. Maybe it was a true candle. <laughs> I may just... I don't know. So, Wouldn't that be weird? Well, if that's the case, is it something that's um, league? I don't know. Another mystery. Yes. This dining room chandelier is going to take a lot more research. We'll pick that up another time. I forgot the most important news of all. Last night when I got home, I had a message from the attorneys that we are an official tax-exempt nonprofit, uh, according to the IRS, so we can start fundraising activities. That's going to protect this house for generations to come. I hope you got a chance to see the fireplace demolition videos. If not, check it out here. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you back next time at the JC League House, a 501c3 nonprofit.